First of all, guys, uh, amazing job on this film. I absolutely loved it. It had me, it, it had me in into it every step of the way. It had me intrigued, and I was uh, trying to solve what was going on uh, every step of the way. So, David, first question I have for you is: This film really feels like a coming of age story with some dark edges to it. Where did this idea come from? It got my dark coming of age. <laughs> um, I suppose, you know, initially um, it came from, um, I was interested in doing something that was to do with the relationship between people and the landscape and the way that um, the landscape is indifferent to us, but at the same time can impact upon us and alter the course of our lives in ways that we don't expect. Um, that interesting way, um, we think of the landscape as inanimate and yet we're powerless against what it does. Um, and I suppose that got me thinking about um, that powerlessness that you feel as a teenager and a young person. Um, the, a lot of the, the, the freedoms that we take for granted as adults, um, or we did take for granted before the, the current, <laughs> you know, um, you just don't possess as a, as a child. You can't go where you want when you want. You're trapped in a lot of ways. Um, by being a young person. And so that becomes a crucible for, um, uh, I suppose, tension and um, the potential for violence and all of these kind of things come out of that constriction that you experience as, as a young person. So I was interested in that as well. Amazing. So now, uh, David, also, uh, I know that you saw Phil's uh, short North um, uh, when, when, you know, when uh, you sent him the script. Uh, can you talk to me about what elements uh, that he had in North that you knew he'd be up for the challenge of the Winter Lake? Well, I mean, I, you know, I thought that the short was, I, I mean, there was an interesting dynamic between mother and son kind of at the, at the backbone of the short, which was something that's part of our, our film as well. Um, but also, you know, the sense of place that that's captured in that in, in the short and place is so important to the Winter Lake and, and um, you know, I, I suppose something that felt very real, but at the same time had an otherworldliness, um, a strangeness about it. And it's a very difficult thing, I think, to take um, the, the, the familiar and make it make us look at it again, make it strange to us or uncanny. Um, and I think that was what I really enjoyed about the short. Now, Phil, what were some of the themes from David's script that you wanted to explore in The Winter Lake? Uh, but kind of a lot of what David's talking there. There's a lot about just relationship dynamics in, inside families and and just that kind of like we all need somebody to love and we all want somebody to love us. But when like, you know, like when is that the worst thing for you? And this kind of stuff. So it's like it's yeah, just exploring these really extreme family dynamics, which is kind of it's, it's a mainstay in a lot of things that I do. It's like where's the limits? To the love inside a family, how how far are you willing to go for the people you love? How much does that destroy who you are as a person? These kind of things. So, yeah, and then also like just not, like even in reading the script, like the Winter Lake, there's an element of um, like you have to have your own way into it. Kind of so there was a loneliness in each of the characters that I thought was like really palpable, really poetic. That I just thought was that really that that's what drew me in more than anything was that I was really aware of how um, the depth of each of the characters' lives and stuff. So that was, that was it. Now, speaking of that, like so much of what, uh, so much of what Anton's doing for the role of Tom is internalized and he, he turns out an amazing, brilliant performance. Uh, can you guys both talk to me about helping uh, craft the character of Tom with Anton and what he brought to the role of Tom that may have not been on the page? God, well, I mean, you know, it's a, super, it's a difficult role in a lot of ways because so little dialogue. <laughs> um, right. And you're in some ways giving him very little um, it, that way. Um, I mean, the script, as, as I recall, was, was, was very kind of descriptive, um, much more so than I, I guess would be typical in, in a script because there's so little dialogue. And so you're filling in in different ways. But... I'm, you know, the most exciting thing always about a, a script is um, is the gap between what you've written and the, and the performance, is the interpretive gap and what they bring to it and how um, you, um, 
how they transform it. I mean, it's not, I know it's called a script, but, but you know, one doesn't want to be too prescriptive about it. You know, it's, it's interesting when people are, when they mutate it in a, in, in a way and you see it afresh when you see it performed. And, and I mean, he, he did that. I thought, you know, the, the, the spaces that are in that script where there would perhaps normally be dialogue, he did fascinating things with, with. so yeah. Now, uh, Phil, the whole cast in this film is, is really brilliant. No, I mean, Charlie Murphy knocks it out of the park. Emma McKay, man, what a powerhouse, right? Uh, can, you guys, can you talk to me about working with them and, and about what may have surprised you with their performances? Um, well, with Charlie and Emma in particular, they, they, I did, well, actually, I could say this across the board. They all came in very much with their own interpretation, they their own interpretation of the characters. And then my job was just, really to help them like realize it. Like it was just like answer any questions they might have, talk to them about the scene, why, like very, very simple stuff, which hopefully that's what it always is. Um, but the thing that happened with all of them was that they were, they were so sure and so resolute who their characters were when they got there first day, like first day, day one, there was just no guesswork with them. Wow. And they were so confident with it. So like, as we went through the scene, but I'd put that like, as they, like, a lot down to the to the writing to the script there was no like you knew at all times where you were in the script you knew why they were doing what they were doing so they had a lot to hold on to a lot to anchor their performance in um and then it was just like for the first couple of days it's like finding the tone like in terms of matching their matching whatever they were doing with the pace with the blocking that kind of thing but like it kind of it very quickly just turned into a, almost a um almost a technical exercise because what they were doing was so right. I didn't want to get in their way. Like, you know, just like very random, very rarely, I uh, just like, we'll go again with a very slight alteration. But yeah, from like, from day one, I was kind of, yeah, in, in awe at how good they all were. So, yeah. And it was like, it was a difficult, like it, we're dead of winter in Ireland in a house with no electricity, no heating. It was like, it wasn't easy for them, but they uh, troopers, troopers and extremely talented, yeah. Now, uh, David, this question's for you. There's something very mysterious, honest, and vulnerable about Emma's performance. And I know that this is the, the Holly character is the character that you kind of attached to the most. Is, is her performance what you kind of imagined for the character when you were writing her? Her, I mean, it's it's what I would have hoped for. Yeah, I, I mean, um, her, you know, she created her performance, so I, I can't say that, you know, <laughs> I can't take responsibility for it. Um, but, you know, it's a difficult role because so much of it is below the surface. And though, you know, she speaks more than Anson, she's more outgoing in some ways, she's also more withholding in other ways. And it's, it's a complex, um, part I think in a lot of ways because though it's a very realist film it's also drawing upon you know film noir and, and this kind of stuff and so you're asking somebody to both um, occupy a very realistic world and also kind of I suppose reinvent that kind of noir archetype um, which is a difficult thing you know um, and yeah I mean she I, I, I thought she did it I thought she was just so fascinating to watch. I remember seeing. I remember the first time I saw Rushes. I I just found it really fascinating to watch the her interaction with the other actors. Yeah, but also her interaction with the camera and the way she worked with. I, I love to see actors who work with the medium of film, who work with the camera. Where oftentimes actors are may, maybe from a more theatrical background, something like that, and so essentially you're filming a performance, but sometimes the most provocative acting, the most interesting acting is a dialogue between the performers, but also a dialogue between performer and camera. And I thought it was really fascinating to watch that, especially with Anson and, and Emma. Now I wanna talk about Michael's character Ward for a second, because that character can easily uh, be a monster in this film, but he brings this complexity and humanity to the character. Um, can you talk to me about, about uh, helping, or not even helping, but uh, talking about shaping his performance and, and informing his performance to to get there where he needed to go because I thought that he what he did with that character was brilliant. Yeah, well, again, this, like a lot of it, like David did a really like fantastic job. But I suppose I don't think Michael would have been interested in it if he was just 
like your cookie cutter bad guys so even like from the very beginning his ambition was to like was to exhibit a guy who's wrestling with his demons and trying to bury them and like and in his mind he's done one bad thing once you know what i mean and why should that mean that this is who he is so so he like as much as whatever he's done is is really extreme and we would like like vilify him for it you can kind of understand the logic that he's putting into his own thinking that gets him through the day that makes him believe that he actually well deep down i'm a nice guy deep down i'm a good guy um but yeah and then like obviously like michael just needs to be brave enough to go with it and, and go with that story and, and kind of exhibit that arc of a character who lets that monster out again by the end or who has no choice to let it out it's just it's who he is right uh, yeah, now, i hope i say this right now phil you shot this in sligo ireland correct uh that's it, it good. uh it, it's almost like stepping back into time uh when when i was watching this uh, at least uh, with the scenery wise uh was this by design and also uh, can you talk to me about how sligo helped uh inform uh the the you know the the uh the story yeah it was very much by design we kind of we wanted a, a place that felt forgotten and it, so it wasn't necessarily that it was back in time because like the kids have modern mobile phones right. and stuff but um, but yeah, it was a place that was kind of shown, pushed, put us pushed aside, um, where people are left to kind of like fester in their loneliness and isolation, and what that might do to you, and what it does to the economy, and what it does to the town, and all these all these kind of things. And it does, yeah, it, it should inform everything. Like do you know what I mean? Like the character locations are characters. Um, so and just very simply, obviously, will inform framing and what you want it to say. Like in terms of like how how uh, run down this town is, like in terms of like even like the post office doesn't even have its um, kind of signage up anymore. Everything's in the stages of shutting down and things. So, um, but yeah, but then it, as I said, like David was saying, the landscape and people's relationship to it, that was also like we we searched high and low for the right house and the right landscape, like the house sitting in the landscape, so that we could really show that. Um, but yeah, but that totally informed. It's only like because it was. It's where Tom, the main character, felt most at home. And it was like his like his journey was very much brought to bear, started all the kind of through the lake, through the landscape. So yeah, we just had to had to be right, basically. So. Can you also talk to me about some of the challenges? Now, for, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I heard it gets, you guys shot this almost exactly two years ago, and it gets fairly Thank cold uh, in, in March uh, around that area. Can you talk to me yeah. about some of the challenges uh, you may have faced during production? Because that's a quick five week shoot. It was impossible. I got, <laughs> like, I literally, I, there was a lot of, there's a lot of stuff that we just couldn't do, just purely because. Like, yeah, if it's nighttime and it's cold, things, things are already running slow. But if it's nighttime, it's cold and you're getting in and out of water. Like it, it was, it was, yeah, it was really tough. But again, I could not believe how, how the actors just did it with a smile. <laughs> like, like genuinely that whole, like all the stuff that happens in the water towards the end, that lake that we were in was completely frozen over two nights before. So it was literally zero degrees to water. And they're going in and out of it and they're going in and out of it all night and it was just like god fair play I, yeah but it was like then it's it i suppose it becomes the, the attrition that bonds you as well though like everyone kind of gets into the same groove and we're in it together um so, so on that level yeah it was like it's one of them things when you look back on it you enjoy it but you didn't enjoy it when you're in it <laughs> yeah, yeah it was good though it was great i can imagine now a lot of this film is about what lies underneath the surface uh, what are you hoping audiences experience with the Winter Lake? Ooh, ooh, big question. Jesus. Who wants to go first? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll do something, David. You go first. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm always quite open with with a. I, I think your role as a, a filmmaker is to give an audience something about which they can feel something. Yeah. But what they feel is up to them. I, I, I know there's a school of thought where a film is a machine for producing a certain emotional response, and I don't feel that way. I think it's a, a text to produce a response, but the response is the audience's. I mean, insofar as it has a message, I mean, what I would maybe like people to take away from it is, is a reconsideration of some of, our, um, some of the things that we believe about family, um, a lot of the time, 
uh, we tend to think of the irreducible unit of society as the family and the family is the bedrock upon which everything is built and okay if you have a, a functional family and a great family hooray for you maybe that is the case but many people don't and and so um the the broken family the individual all of these things have equal merit they have uh, you know you can be alone and still um matter you don't have to be part of this nuclear family unit so that i think is something that's important How about you, Phil? um yeah like for me i don't think the film is offering any answers and it's not trying to or nor should it but it's definitely it's definitely trying to get you to like maybe like you know like examine family boundaries maybe like examine things like in in the not too distant art happens all around us every day that you don't know what's happening in your neighbor's houses things like that um but like more pointedly in ireland like there's there's some like there's a lot of history along the lines of this film that needs to be talked about and we need to like you can't put things under the rug forever you can't ignore things they will come back in ways you don't want them to come back and will like like make you act in bad in yeah like yeah, so it's, probably, it's just like the, the, the element of repression, the element of being able to talk, the element of taking shame away from, from something that wouldn't be your fault, being able to like examine it as a society so that we can hopefully heal as a society. Things like that are kind of are more important to me, are most important to me about it, but yeah. Well, look, this film is brilliant. You guys did a great job. The performances are, are stunning in this. And uh, Look, everything, everything was great. I love this film. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Thank you.